What's happening folks? Back out in Denver, finally. It's been, I think, over a month now. Shooting middle of Denver, downtown, usual sort of area. Hoping to see some cool, like, Christmas type stuff and maybe a little bit of activity. Cause, uh, it's been too long and I'm kind of craving some good street photography. All right. <laughs> What's happening folks? Welcome back to another episode of Street Notes. Today I'm out shooting with the Ricoh GR, the OG one from 2013. Actually there was older ones than that, but the 16 megapixel OG crop sensor one. This first shot here was kind of a warm up shot. I just kind of thought the dog trying to talk to these kids or beg for treats, whatever he was doing was kind of cute moment. There was this photo shoot happening here and coming past the first time I didn't really see a shot that I thought was interesting enough. However, walking back this way after a little while, I like, it, it was still happening, and I spotted this. I liked how she was sitting on the bench there, and we've got the guy right in the foreground. And this this is really cool because I like that pop of color from her jumpsuit and this otherwise sort of stark, like not very color, not very saturated scene. But I do think that it would benefit from this slight crop because some of the left side of the frame there wasn't really important. This herd of buffalo art sculpture thing, I always come here, you've probably seen this in videos before. This guy at the back there was just looking up at this construction. It's still not interesting enough for me and he's just dressed in black so he doesn't really stand out too much. But it's, it's okay, I like the composition, but there's more to be had here. This guy was really interesting, but this shot did not work. I should maybe have committed and got right in his face. Now this artwork on this uh, building, cafe, whatever it is there, is a picture of a sculpture that's about two blocks from that building. And I thought it could maybe be framed interestingly, so I hung around here for a minute. This person in the blue that came along kind of like shrugged and ducked as if she was getting in my shot. Uh, little did she know she was supposed to be in my frame and made it much better. Uh, I cropped it slightly there, uh, but it looks almost like she's mirroring the the way the bear is kind of leaning forward as well. There's definitely, there could have been much better gestures and things going on here, but you know, the matching colors, I like that, and there's something about this scene that is okay, but I would definitely come back here to shoot that again, or try. Right here, Jack actually stopped yeah. to take a shot, and I stole the shot, and I don't know if we got the exact same frame or not, but he noticed this, these people up on this building above us, and uh, so I took that, and I'm taking the credit in this video as well, so thank you, Jack. Try a little on-the-fly side shot as we're walking past here. This guy's jacket matched the, the blue of that vase thing over there. There is a Christmas market in Denver, uh, but it's been very tightly sort of controlled and monitored for how many people go in there, which which is good, but also it makes it much more sparsely populated, which is a shame for street photography. This woman was interesting, and I wish I had um, took the time to set my camera up and got a nice close-up shot of her, but I did not. Dog was cute. What? There's nothing else to say. <laughs> this shot was a little bit sly on the way past. I like the red hat and the green jumper. The woman's holding this plate of food. It's it's not it's not that interesting though. I thought this could have been a good shot, but again there wasn't really any interesting gestures happening there. And yeah, whatever. Moving on. I thought I could maybe use this chocolate sign to kind of create like a blocking of the frame. And there's a couple people there that are walking towards me, the guy with kind of a cool hat on. So hanging here, trying to make some sort of an interesting frame of it. And we get this one here. I quite like it. It's, it's not bad. I like the, the just the composition, I guess. Um, it would be nice if he was maybe better defined uh, because the background's a little dark. But yeah, I like the colors. In case anybody's wondering, all of the shots today are made with the positive film picture profile in the GR. 
Uh, sometimes I've turned up the, the vibrance a little bit or the contrast just to give it a bit more pop. And it's on auto white balance as well, but I've, I've sort of biased it towards the warm side. So it gives everything a slightly warmer look. This photo here, there's a couple Santa hats in the picture. It would have been nice if there'd been a third one over on the left, but it's still kind of nice. I like it. One of the reasons for me picking the original GR was that it apparently has the best of the positive film profiles and I mean the other ones are still going to be great but this seems to be people's favourite one. And they're also becoming a lot more rare than the later models so it seemed like a good time to pick one up before they start getting more expensive. Pigeons again, I'm always trying to shoot some cool photos of pigeons and there were hundreds of them here. What I wish I had done was taken the time to be closer to that woman that was feeding them and maybe got some gestures or something there and included her in the frame. But as I thought about that, she started to leave, so I was too late. This little dog here was very cute. Coming back down 16th here, I saw this guy with his briefcase. Tried to get a shot of it, I mean it was not. It didn't work out. I couldn't really figure out how to hold the camera properly, to be honest with you. I should have just turned it upside down. Here we have some shots through a bus window. Hadn't tried this with the GR, wasn't sure how well it was going to go with a wider focal length. But this one I actually really like. Uh, just that the whole frame is blocked off by this safety guideline thing. I can't wait till they take them off of those windows. The next shot though was I think the same person but in the next window and this is a bit more abstract. You can see the Denver streets reflected behind. Here I was looking at the sculpture over there but then I saw this guy with a trapper hat walking towards me and the nice thing with the GR is I could just throw it out in front of me and uh, get a shot and I think this guy caught me. Frame and the composition and the background is horrendous though so this Instagram trap parcel thing uh, potentially could be cool, but you know there's nobody here, nobody like using it, and uh, the, you know this frame I like, I like the colours, but there's nothing happening. Same thing here, nobody's around these floats, nobody's really looking at them or interacting or anything, so I'm just kind of playing around with layering and composition with these sheep sculptures. Now coming across this road here, there's these girls on the right of the screen. You can't quite see them, but they have matching denim jackets and they have some matching colours in their in their um, accessories, I guess. So the one girl's mask is that kind of brown colour and the other girl, I think it's her purse, is this kind of brown colour as well. I just wish I'd framed it a little bit lower so that you could see all of that and it would make a bit more sense. This guy on the left, I thought had spoiled the frame. However, his hair and the tree kind of look like one, so it's almost like the tree is, so he has this large um, uh, sort of mane of hair. And I think those girls did catch me afterwards because Jack said that I did a strange sort of lunge walk thing, and uh, so that probably gave it away, but I sort of sold it afterwards by pretending I was taking a picture of the buildings and or the street behind them. This American furniture warehouse ad float thing. It's kind of hilarious. I like that there's a tiger as their mascot. I have seen their trucks before but I've never seen uh, this like living room set up with tiger stuffed toys. It kind of reminds me of the Tiger King but I wish there was something happening like maybe kids running around in there or something. I quite like these frames even even though there's nothing else interesting happening. They're just kind of weird. And here the battery just ran out on the GoPro uh, but that guy walked through there and I framed them under there. It's it's whatever. Here I was actually on the phone to the vet and trying to take a picture of this couple handling this mattress at the same time. Uh, it, I mean it worked out okay. It's, it's interesting in the fact that it is a person carrying a mattress or box spring uh, but otherwise it's it's not super interesting. The gesture I guess is quite good. There was a sudden lot of people congregating on this corner and it wasn't, I mean nothing was happening but I did get this little side picture of this guy's cigarette. Jack noticed this tunnel that I, I feel like I've seen from the other side before but I've never actually walked through. 
but as we, we actually turned round instead of going back out that way and I noticed this woman in this like sewing I don't know what you call these t types of stores trying to use this graphic on the window to frame her and kind of make it more interesting she didn't look up or anything unfortunately but I, I don't mind this frame I did however not I didn't slow the shutter down and I should have and I kept the aperture at f8 so it was really dark and the ISO went really high so you'll see the grain in there and it's definitely high enough that it's at its like limit and everything looks very grainy I honestly think if this had been a great photo and I'd printed it you probably wouldn't see that color noise so I don't think it'd be a big deal crossing the road here there's this mother and daughter on the right and I took a kind of sly side shot which is one of the perks of the GR you can shoot like that and I, this photo is okay, there's something about this picture and I think it might be the lines on the floor from the train tracks just kind of lead you into the background so there's all these leading lines that give that look of perspective and the kid holding the wrapping paper is just kind of an interesting gesture but it's also in line with the with the blue of that store on the right hand side so it gives this other diagonal line Another side shot here, got this person gesturing, I guess they were looking at maps, trying to figure out where they were going. These kids on this thing, uh, this bench thing, I've been, I've been back at this bench so many times as you may have seen in other videos, and I actually just had to ask them if I could shoot a photo of their feet, because I thought it would be interesting. And I didn't notice at the time, but the kid on the left's shoes and pants are also red, yellow and blue. So there's this sort of colour match in there and this is fine but I think the real photo was actually here and this is cropped a lot and I'm not really into that but if I had moved the camera down and closer I would have still got that 28mm perspective with the three feet in there and it would have been more focused on the kids colourful shoes. This was, this was my last shot of the day, I hadn't seen anything for a while at this point and my feet and legs were getting sore so I was ready to go home. There's this couple crossing the road here and they were kind of dressed exactly the same and that, that was what I liked about that. That was really about it. Again, we've got that vanishing perspective of the street and uh, yeah, that was it really. So I've had this camera for a few months now and this is the first day that I've actually dedicated my day of shooting street photography to just using the GR. I did bring the X100 just in case I got frustrated with it, but I found that it was actually fine and I had a lot of fun shooting with this camera. I've been hearing a lot of good things about Ricoh GRs for, for a long time now, partly from Lin Taro's YouTube channel, so Lin Taro made me do it, I guess. And I had been interested to see what all the fuss was about. People said that these were really good cameras and they're so pocketable. And up until now, I'd never mind, I mean, I still don't mind just carrying a camera across my shoulder. I think that's perfectly fine as well and it's just as accessible. But in some instances, it's even nicer to have a camera that just fits in your pocket so you don't look like you're carrying a camera and it looks even less professional than small Fujifilm cameras do anyways. So it's sort of less threatening. And one of the things that I really liked about it was I didn't have to get myself physically closer to things. I would. I found that I just would reach my arm out and I was worried that 28 millimeters would be too wide, but it's not really too wide when you can just put your arm closer to people and you don't have to physically enter the space that they're in as much. You just sort of throw the camera around and as, as maneuverable and small as I find the X100 to be, this is, even more so, just like flickable and you can, you know, even hold it upside down, down low and put it in any direction, it doesn't really matter. And you've got that nice wide frame. So it's definitely a niche camera. It's not gonna be for everybody. Uh, you have to like 28 millimeters. Uh, my favorite just now is 35, but I'm warming up to 28 a little bit. And this is the older version. So this one was released in 2013. So you can tell it's older when you go through the menu. It's just a, it looks like a 2013 camera and the focus is a bit slower, although it's fine. I haven't really tried to move the autofocus point from the center and I've never once used the autofocus on the street, but 
I set it to the snap focus, uh, which I don't fully understand. I understand like the full press snap thing and I, I don't really like it. I think it's actually slower than I would like it to be. But having it on snap, I can just sort of I press one of the buttons and then set it to one meter, one and a half, two, and very quickly you end up with most of the stuff from one meter to infinity in focus at like F8. And that's all, that's pretty much what I leave it on. If I think I'm gonna be close to something, I can change it to autofocus and it'll focus on something close if you just like press this function button and then you go back to snap and it goes back to where it was. It takes a little bit of getting used to it, I would say, but for anyone who loves F8 street photography and just wants to have everything in focus and not really think too much and just shoot, then this might be a camera worth thinking about. Anyways, I guess I'll probably do a review of this 30, uh, 2013, I guess nearly eight year old camera sometime in the future. Maybe I know someone with a GR2 and a GR3, so maybe I can compare and contrast it with those as well. Thank you very much for watching. Like and subscribe if you haven't already. Drop me a comment down below, let me know what you thought, and I'll see you in the next video. Cheers.